In Massachusetts, the night isn't as dark as it used to be. Streetlights, glowing storefronts, and towering spotlights are drowning out the stars. But now, everyday citizens are taking charge, measuring the brightness of our skies and pushing for change. Through projects like Globe at Night, volunteers are using simple tools to track how artificial light is impacting our view of the universe. Their data is revealing a stark reality. Our night skies are fading year by year. In this upcoming segment, Civic Sci TV correspondent Shannon Geary explores and shares updates on the local growing citizen science movement around light pollution right here in Massachusetts. On a typical night in a city like Somerville, you can't see too many stars, but I found myself really trying this past year because we had so many of these uh, astronomical phenomenon occurring. You know, the eclipse back in April of 2024, meteor showers towards the back half of the year, uh, even the aurora borealis appearing farther south than it normally does. And you saw all on online and on social media, people trying to get a glimpse. Uh, and it's just very difficult with the level of light pollution that we currently have. As you might expect, light pollution is increasing at a pretty rapid rate. There was an article published in 2023 in Science using citizen science data collected all over the world, people just observing the night sky and how much they could see from their homes. Um, and that data has shown that the night sky is getting about 10% brighter every year, uh, which is pretty devastating in terms of night sky visibility. And light pollution is a major problem, not just for astronomers who are trying to study the night sky and observe the universe around us, um, but it's also a major waste of energy and money to have inefficient or uh, unnecessary lighting. Uh, it can disrupt ecosystems. It has effects on nocturnal animals and migratory species like birds or sea turtles uh, and even human health. I was surprised to find out that Massachusetts is the only state in the Northeast that doesn't currently have statewide, state-level legislation regulating light pollution. And there are advocates who are trying to change that, including Kelly Beatty, who I interviewed. Uh, he is the co-author of a bill titled, An Act to Improve Outdoor Lighting, Conserve Energy, and Increase Dark Sky Visibility. Kelly Beatty and his co-author Tim Brothers wrote this bill to regulate um, state and municipal funded lighting. So it would not affect lighting in businesses or residences, um, but it simply means that any lights being replaced or any new lighting going up would fall under regulations uh, for that lighting to be more effective, efficient, and mindful about the night sky visibility and the light pollution the lights give off. So this can mean anything from lights being on a timer to lights having, um, you know, a lessened glare or lights having a, a shield to prevent them from kind of emitting light up into the air where nobody needs it versus down at sidewalks uh, or entrances, things of that nature. The bill has garnered the support of many key stakeholders, including citizen advocates, legislators, educators, and even professional lighting societies, like the Illuminating Engineering Society. But it has yet to be passed. Uh, Beattie told me that despite all the positive support around the bill, it continues to be pushed onto the back burner uh, or held up in the state Senate. Most recently, in 2024, it was inexplicably withdrawn as an amendment to a larger climate bill that got heard out on the Senate floor. But co-authors Kelly Beattie and Tim Brothers have resubmitted the bill for the upcoming legislative session. What's interesting about light pollution research is that it relies very heavily on citizen scientists. Even though Massachusetts doesn't currently have statewide regulation, advocates have managed to get lighting ordinances passed in individual cities and towns. You can see a full list of the cities and towns that have implemented lighting ordinances on the Dark Sky Massachusetts chapter website. Additionally, if you would like to help collect data on light pollution and night sky visibility, it's really simple to do. You can participate in the Globe at Night project by visiting globeatnight.org. I actually just did this last night. I stood out on my porch despite the cold. Um, it was a really clear night. Uh, I pulled the website up on my phone, entered my address, it gave me the latitude and longitude of where I was. And then they have all sorts of little pictures and descriptor boxes for, to help you describe what you're able to see in the night sky. You do not need to be a professional astronomer. I personally don't even know the constellations that well, but 
the website really helps guide you through it. Um, you can track, you know, what constellations you are able to see if you have any sort of uh, night sky app on your phone. But in general, all you need is access to the internet and a clear view of the sky above you, not obstructed by trees or houses or anything like that. Um, and it's really easy to do. And then you just submit and your data is used to track uh, night sky visibility over time. SciComm is a communications company built for scientists by me, a scientist. SciComm works directly with academic researchers, tech companies, nonprofits, and any scientist to create clear, engaging, scientifically accurate media. Whether you need a whiteboard video to teach your audience something new, an animated explainer video that breaks down your complex work into something that's easier to understand, visually compelling slides for an upcoming presentation, a blog article to inform your readers of the latest research in your field, or even just a simple illustration, SciComm is your communications partner. Simplify your science with SciComm.